maaaring tumayo po tayong lahat. Uh, Panginoon namin Diyos na nagpapasalamat po kami sa gabi ito uh, sa aming seminar na Sing the Unseen. Uh, salamat po sa mga dumalo sa gabi ito at yung mga dadalo pa po. Uh, Ganyan din po uh, nagpapasalamat kami at nandito sa aming si Pastor Polo upang bahaginan tayo ng uh, ng iyong salita, Panginoon. Uh, Lord, uh, gabay niyo po ang mga susunod na uh, mga susunod na uh, praise and worship at uh, speaker, Panginoon. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. continue our program with praise and song towards our faithful God. Praise. Isang pinagpahan ng gabi po sa ating lahat. Alam ko pong nanggaling tayo sa labas. So, kanya-kanya po tayo nang pinanggaling ang trabaho. And I know that we come from a world that has blinded us from seeing what God has intended us to see. So sa gabi ito po sa ating pag-aaral, tayo po ay magsama-sama, magpakumbaba sa harapan na ating Panginoon at hilingin na buksan niya ang ating mga mata upang makita ang kanyang pagpapala. Umawit po tayo ng papuri sa kanya.
Tumo natin ang ating nag-iisa at tunay na Diyos. Alam ko, we always rely on our own strength, on our own efforts, our own capabilities. And dahil dun po, lagi pong hindi sumasapat, no? Because it is not by might but by power, by the Spirit that we can overcome. We always see the problem and only through the eyes of Jesus can we see the solutions. We always see just the battle and God sees the victory for us. So sa gabi nito po, uh, let's pray for that breakthrough that we be that we be able to see what God has intended us to enjoy. At sa pagmulat po ng ating mga mata, let us speak blessing to one another. Let us see healing beyond the sickness. Let us see the grandeur beyond the ruins. Makita po natin yung kagalingan sa in the midst po ng kaguluhan.
you tonight because there is no other savior other than you and by your stripes we have been healed and by your grace and mercy we have been delivered father open our eyes tonight enable us O oh lord to receive your revelations enable us to be enlightened by your word use brother paulo to to guide us in the study of your word to receive your blessing. We thank you for bringing us to this place. This is our prayer in the mighty and most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's clap unto the Lord. Please be seated. For the fourth time now, welcome. <laughs> I hope you come tonight empty and ready to be filled no and a heart that is willing to listen a heart that is willing to be obedient let us now welcome our speaker for tonight pastor brother paul Lo. good evening okay this one good evening Thank you for taking your time tonight out to be with us. Title of tonight and tomorrow night is this title called Seeing the Unseen. How many of you know, how many of you are aware that what you can see is not actually as real as what you cannot see? Do you know, do you know what I mean? For example, you look at your own life, you look at your own situation tonight, and you say, this is life, this is what, what I, but we can't see what God is actually doing in our own life. How many of you have seen God? Not even in a dream? Vision? Neither have I. Let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Father God, tonight, even as we talk about the unseen realm, talk about the truth of what you are leading us into, Father God, we pray that you drop something in each and every one of us that it will not be of man's knowledge, it will not be of man's wisdom, but it would be of you. Oh, Holy Father, thank you, Jesus, for your perfect work. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 
We give you full reign tonight as you teach us and as we sit at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask the team to help put the first uh, verse out there. That, and this will be our key verse in 2 Corinthians. This verse was actually a pastor friend of mine. Uh, last year told me, he says, Pastor, you know, the team for next year for my church is see the unseen. Ours is seeing the unseen. His is see the unseen. And, and he used this verse and these two verses stuck with me uh, since we had that conversation last November. And as I begin to ponder, as I begin to meditate on his church team of the year, I sense that the Holy Spirit is opening up a lot of avenue for even my own ministry, my own life, my own family, and also for my own stewardship. So, what's going to happen tonight and tomorrow night will be sort of topical. So we're going to have a break time, and I better put my alarm so I don't go over time. It's already 9, 7.42 here. We will have a break at about 8.30, all right? Have about 15 minutes. Let you all have some coffee so you all don't fall asleep. And then we'll come back and do the second session, all right? So the verse goes like, that, uh, goes like this. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. How many of you, when you look at your daily life, how many of you wake up every day, every day of the week, and he says, wow, today is wonderful, everything is wonderful, and you never lose heart? How many of you never get discouraged? Only Jesse, yeah? Jesse is always smiling. Oh, no, no, no. He's not smiling, he's crying. He's crying because April is coming. <laughs> he's losing something, but he's gaining something else. <laughs> Though inwardly, we may be wasting away. You know, some of us, when we are young, some of you who are younger, you can't wait to be 16 years old. You can't wait to be 18 years old. You can't wait for independence. True? Correct? Then after that, when you get into your 20s, you can't wait to get your job. You can't wait to get your new life, get into a love life, get married. Once you pass 35, 40, you want to slow down the time. Because you're reaching the 50 and the 60 and the... How many of you, my age, 60 and above, remember you're 16 years old? It looks like long, long time ago. It says this in the next verse. It says, we do not... Uh, verse 17, please. Verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So whether you like it or not, Jesus said this, in this life, in this world, you will have troubles. How many of you got no trouble? Wake up every day, every day is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Ariel, huh? Ariel is ever smiling, you know. So one smile went out already. <laughs> so, whether we like it or not, things never go the way we want. True? True? Uh, Pastor David, Pastor Lisa sitting behind there, they were supposed to be with me uh, in Masbate uh, last week. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Lisa's uh, dad passed away so that she I was on the way, they, they stopped, and I was going there on the way, and then they have an earthquake, and then when I was there, uh, reception was bad. E everything didn't work well. But you know something? These are light and momentary 
troubles. The feedback after I've come back from Masbate, uh, came back to Manila, came back to Santa Cruz, the last two days, three days, pastors were texting me. They, be, they befriend me on Facebook and uh, uh, send me Facebook messengers. I haven't replied them. I haven't even <laughs> uh, uh, added them on. And, and the thing is that they, are, that they were sharing about how blessed they were, how impacted they were, and we thank God for that. So no earthquake, no brownout, no lack of communication can stop the work of God. Amen? Amen? And therefore, what you, may, you and I may not see, the results or the happening we want on our daily basis, know this, in the unseen realm, God is doing things in your life. So the first section... The first section before we go for a break is about you personally. So these three verses, let's go to verse 18. These three verses would be something that we will talk on again, especially verse 18. For so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is? But what is? Do you know something? I can see your physical body. I cannot see your soul. I cannot see your spirit. I cannot see your thoughts. I cannot see your feelings. You're sitting down there. I can't see that. But are they real? Is your soul real? Is your spirit real? Are your feelings real? Right now, are your thoughts, whatever thoughts you have, you know, are they real? but no one can see them. So we fix our eyes, not what is, on, what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I was just sitting down and talking with some uh, uh, pastors uh, in Masbate. We, we were talking, or no, but not Masbate, sorry, Los Banos, and we were talking about, you know, uh, getting older, losing hair, uh, standing up, you know, your knee pain, uh, you stretch a bit more, your back pain, you, you know. Uh, said last time when we stretch, you know, and, and they always say, last time when we stretch, no problem. You know, we, we jump high, no problem. Now we want to jump also must think three times. Why? Because we are in a sin fallen body, an old creation. So all of us, see, all of us can see this old creation. And that's why we are all waiting for our new body. I want to tell you that, you know, no matter how many years you live well here on earth, no matter how many years you have here on earth, maybe you live 60 years, I just passed 60, going to 61, starting my new journey to the 70, uh, seventh decade of my life. Some of you are heading towards your eighth, 80th year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of you are heading to your 90th year. And even if you live like Abraham, 175 years. How many of you like to live 175 years? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, see, I see a lot of hands. No, 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 enough, enough. <laughs> How many of you would like to live 120? No, no. <laughs> Some violent objection here in the room. But regardless of how many years and how good your life here on earth, all of us are still looking for the body that feels no pain, for the body that has no sickness, for the body that can walk through war. And for those of for all of us here in Asia, whether it's in the Philippines or Indonesia or Malaysia or Singapore, we can eat and not put on weight. You don't have to cook all the vegetarian uh, breakfast from now on after that. So the first section is we want to ask ourselves this question. The question we want to ask ourselves is, 
How do we know? How do we know what is of God and what if it was ourself? So I want to ask the team to help me put on to the next set of scripture. The next set of scripture. And it's about the calling of Abraham. So I'm going to quickly read it for you. The Lord has said to Abram, go out from your country. Actually, the word go out, always uh, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I will show you. All right? I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you would be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. Sometimes when I read this verse, I say, Lord, let me do the cursing, please. <laughs> and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Isn't that a tremendous, tremendous blessing of God? So Abraham went, and as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. And guess at what age did God call Abraham? How many of you are 75 years old right now? Okay? If you're not 75 years old, you are still young, because Abraham only started at 75. I got another 15 years to wait, so I'm not called yet. So the question is this, some of us here in our room, in this room, and those of you watching online, some of my friends are watching online from other countries because I send the link to them. And, and those, of you, those of them who, who will be watching online, they will be writing comments and texting me later. Oh, that wasn't true. That wasn't good. <laughs> I'll get you. That's why I say like the word curse. Think about this. How many of you in your life, what you can see, what you can see. How many of you are so certain that this is what God meant for you? You see, if you are a pastor, especially in the Christian world, if you are a pastor, a missionary like myself, or a leader, how do you know that this is what God has called you to do? If you are a businessman and you are moving into business, how do you know that this is a particular business or the particular industry that God has asked you to do? You, you understand? If you are working, how do you know that this is, the, this is the job that God has asked me to be in? Whether it's teaching, whether it's sales, whether it's marketing, whether it's management, how would you know? And tonight, I want to help you distinguish, literally distinguish what is of God and what is not. So of God, we will learn later, but I'll tell you what is not of God first, okay? Number one, I was just sitting with uh, uh, Dick, uh, Ariel and uh, Annalyn. And we were talking and we were just, I was just singing a song, a little bit of song. And then Annalyn says, Brother Paul, you've been lying. I said, what do you mean? You say you cannot sing. You say that when you sing, people pay you money to stop singing. We just heard you singing. I said, no, I really, I can't sing. And I, I shared with them, you know, in my whole Christian life, my whole Christian life, I've only attended three churches. The first church when I was a youth, I went to a Methodist church. And then I saw a sister, a very beautiful girl that I was interested in. I was in 16, 17 years old. A very beautiful girl I was interested in. She was a backup singer. And I wanted to stand next to her in a backup singer, you know. So I went to audition to be a singer. So the, the, the music director auditioned me, so... It, they gave me the notes. I never seen notes in my life. They all look like Tao Gay to me, you know. And then they, 
she she played the introduction, you know, the notes, you know, they got intro. Clang, 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 clang. I don't know what she was doing. Then she says, try, try. And finally, the only song I knew was Amazing Grace. And even though Amazing Grace, I said, Amazing Grace. I only sang two lines. She said, stop. You cannot be back off singer. Back off. You cannot be backup singer. Back off. So that was the first one at about 16, 17 years old. The second one was when I was in Assemblies of God and I wanted to learn to worship God. So I, my friend is the music director, my close friend. And even my close friend says, after, he, he gave me all the chances in the world. And he told me, Paul, stick to your preaching, stick to your teaching, don't start singing. So the third one was in my current church. They, were, they needed choir because the church was growing and one of, you know, my, one of my, my, some of my friends says, hey, hey, uh, Paul, why don't you go and uh, audition, you know? And the music director is also my friend. I mean, someone that I actually know very, very well and she says, when she saw me, she says, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> so if three music director tells me I cannot sing. I think God is telling me something, right? And likewise, in your own life, in your own life, you may have a desire, you may have a plan, you may think of certain things you want to do, but listen, if it's of God, you're a child of God. If it's of God, God will give you confirmation. But if it's not of God, God will also give you confirmation it's not of God. Why? Because God doesn't want you to waste your time. God doesn't want you to waste your effort. But sometimes some of us are, this word called stubborn. You know, we want to do it our way and then we spend the rest of our life having issues. So Abraham went. Abraham, when Abraham went out, he was 75 years old. Look at the next set of scripture for me. This is at Genesis 15. Now, Genesis 15 comes after Genesis 14. I know this is a new revelation, but 15 comes after 14. And in Genesis 14 is where Abraham went to rescue Lot. Remember? Abraham went to rescue Lot. And then there was two kings that came to meet Abraham as he rescued Lot and came back. One was Melchizedek. You remember who's Melchizedek? This is God himself. And what did he bring? He brought the bread and wine. And after he brought the bread and wine, he blessed Abraham. His name has two meanings. Huh? Melchizedek, king of righteousness, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace. So righteousness and peace came to meet Abraham, to offer Abraham the bread and the wine. Abraham gave the tithe, and when Melchizedek left, king of Sodom came and says, keep all that you have earned, just give me the people. And Abraham says, no, I, I swore off not to take anything, not a single centavo from you not even a shoelace, so that you cannot say, I make Abraham rich. 15, in chapter 15 of Genesis, is where uh, God says, and, and after this, the Lord appeared to Abraham. Verse 1 says, after this, the Lord appeared to Abraham and says, uh, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Abraham says, Lord, what have you given me, seeing I go childless? And the person that will take over my inheritance is Eliezer of Damascus, my servant. And God says, this man will not be the one that's, uh, that takes over your inheritance. But from your own body, you have a son. And then he asks Abraham to prepare the, the, the sacrifices and stuff like that. Many a times, uh, guys, uh, 
that lady there on. Can you help me turn to put it on the, put the Genesis 15 on, uh, from verse 12 onwards. Genesis 15 verse 12, and just put it on screen. And let's see whether we can. I'm I'm going off off tangent, so they're going to help me to do that. And often people say this. I ask people this question many many times, many many times. Okay especially from verse 6. Uh, verse 5, start, let's start from the beginning. Do you have it? Genesis 15, verse, verse 1 onwards, and then we need to go and scroll down. What I want to show you is this. How do you see the unseen? And this is the first case because Father Abraham is our father of faith. All right? Now, while we were waiting for them to help me put up the Genesis 15, Ready? Yep. All right. Go to verse 5. Can we go to verse 5? Do you do? Can you just jump up one verse? Yes? Okay. So, verse 5, Abraham asks, God, what can you give me? And then God says, God took him outside and said, look up the stairs. Look up the sky and count the stars. And if indeed you can count them, then shall your offspring, offspring be. My question to you is, when God took Abraham outside, what time was that? Night time. Everybody told me it's night time. Why? Because only night time they can you see the stars. Okay? Look, let's go to verse 6. And Abraham believed God. It never said that Abraham looked up, the, looked up the sky and counted the stars. It says, Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord credited to him as righteousness. Verse 7, please. He also said, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of Chaldean to give you this land. Now remember, remember in Genesis chapter 12, he says, get out from your father's household to a land that I will show you. Correct? Here is the first confirmation that God said back to Abraham. I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldean to give you this land. So when at Genesis 12, when Abraham believed God and started walking, he doesn't know which land. You understand? In Genesis 15, verse 7, he says, I'm giving you this land. Now, we do not know. Maybe it's just a lot. Maybe 300 square, 300 square meter. This land. You know, can you imagine Abraham travel all the thousands of kilometers and then God give him 300 square meters or maybe 500 square meters. Let's go to verse 8. And Abraham said, Servant Lord, how can I know I will gain possession of it? And this is, this is important. Huh? Abraham is asking for confirmation. If something that God has put in your heart, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, whether even your future husband, your future wife, how many children you want, you, you want to have, whatever it is, you know, Never be afraid to ask God for confirmation. You find this even in Gideon. Remember Gideon? Gideon? All right? What did Gideon do? Gideon, when God says, go and attack the Midianites, he says, how do I know that I'm the one? How do I know whether this is really God or not? And then God said, you know, he says, God, if it's really you, this punch... Right? Let it be dry, but the whole land full of dew. What happened? The next morning, he woke up. The whole land is wet, but the sponge is dry. Is that confirmation? Is that enough? Gideon, not enough. Oh God. Now tomorrow, you know, as if you're, you're testing God, you know. Today you fail, do, do again tomorrow. It's like you're testing God. Gideon did this. What did Gideon do? He asked God, God, tomorrow let the whole land be dry, 
but my sponge be wet. And when he woke up, he took the sponge and he squeezed it and it was full of water. So likewise, Abraham asked God, how would I know that I will take possession of this? How many children did Abraham have at that time when in Genesis 15? None. Ishmael not here yet. How do you become a nation if you don't have children? Impossible. So the Lord said to him, bring me and hire a goat, a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Next one, please. Verse 10, And Abraham brought this to him, cut them into two, arranged the half, opposite one another. The birds, however, he did not cut them into half. Next verse. verse the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, and Abraham drove them away. Twelve. As the sun was setting. Just now I asked you the question, what time was it when God brought Abraham out? It was not... If you are a man, one man, okay, one man, and you have a cow, a heifer, a big cow, a big goat, a big sheep, and you're supposed to cut them into half, how long does it take you? How long will it take a butcher, strong man? This is a this is an 85 year old man, huh? all right? How long does it take an 85 year old man to cut the animals into two, three big? Animals, <laughs> use a saw. <laughs> you can say, it's Brother Paul, but Abraham has servants. Okay, fair enough. Let's say they do it quickly. Then why is it that the Bible gives us very specific? As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep. My personal reading of this is that when God talked to Abraham, it was still bright daylight. And God took Abraham out. And he told Abraham, look up to the stars. Look up to the sky. Count the stars. There's no stars to count. What was Abraham doing? He was seeing the unseen. In his, in his mind, in Abraham's mind, he already know so many nights he walked out he has seen the stars, starry, starry night. You know, every, every night Abraham walked out of his tent and he looked at all the stars. But this time when God brought him out, it was still bright daylight. Maybe three o'clock, maybe four o'clock in the afternoon. Sunset around in Philippines, sunset is about five plus, isn't it? Five plus by about 6.37, it's already quite dark. Come to Singapore, sun don't set until 7.30, okay? <laughs> 8 o'clock, then it become dark. So the thing is, Abraham didn't see any stars. Yet he believed. Abraham did not see any stars. Yet he believed. This is the second time God promised him to make him a father of many nations. Let's go on. Let's go to the next verse, verse 13. Then the Lord says, No, for certain, 400 years your descendants will be stranger in a country not your own. They will be enslaved and mistreated there. 14. I will punish the nation they serve as slave. We are talking about Egypt, right? And after that, they will come out with great possession. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here for the sin of the Amorites have not yet reached its full measure. 17. As the sun has set, now only the sun has set. Just now it was setting. Now, can you imagine the Bible actually repeat twice so to make sure that when God brought Abraham out, it was still bright light? What happened? Darkness has fallen, a smoking fire pot and a blazing torch appeared and passed through the pieces. Next one. On that day, God made a covenant with Abram. And this is what 
Remember, huh? Genesis 12? Go out from your house, household, from the land, to a land I will show you. And in the beginning, or just now we read, this is the land that I'm giving you. So, Abraham was thinking, okay, God, you brought me out from my father's land of Ur. You brought me, how big is this land? And actually, God, uh, go, back, go back to 18, please. Go back to 18. Go back to 18 first. And this is where God gave the dimension of the land to Abraham. On that day, God made a covenant with Abram. To your descendants, I give you this land from the wadi of Egypt. Wadi, you know wadi? You know what's a wadi? A wadi is basically the uh, 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 Chaldean word for, uh, sorry, uh, Hebrew word for river. Wadi is river, okay? Wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. Verse 19, please, thank you. To the land of the Canaanites, the Canaanites, and the Kadomites. Next one. The Hittites, the Parasites. A lot of Parasites around, huh? And the Rav Ravites. <laughs> Next one. The Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergeshites, and the Jebusites. Do you know? Do you know something? Up to today, huh? even from Abraham to David, to Solomon also. Abraham, to Moses, to Joshua, to David, to Solomon, which is the greatest. Israel never fully occupy all this land. They never. Do you know why? I'll show you why later. So, yeah. Uh, this is, can we move to my tablet, uh, move to the tablet here? And I will, we got another few minutes, so I want to show you this. If you look into the Bible, the Bible is not single dimension. It is not. If you look to the Bible, it's not single dimension. It is actually multiple dimension. Often, when we read the Bible, we only focus on a lineal dimension. We read the Bible as it is. But the Bible is a living word. The Bible, the Word of God, is a living word. It's not dead. It's not like a storybook. Because the same verse, the same words that you read at different occasion, it actually gives you different meanings. It actually gives you different dimension. So what we want to do tonight, first and foremost, is about yourself. My question to you is, what has God spoken to you? What has God spoken to you? What was the dream? What was the vision that God has given to you? What words did God give to you? How do you know it's from God? So earlier, I said, we want to talk about what is not of God. So we talk about confirmation. I cannot sing. I settled that in my heart. I cannot sing. Okay? I love to, I try to, many times, fail. So I'm 60 years old, I'm not going to try again. Alright? But, how do you know if you have a desire in your heart and that's not of God? A deep desire in your heart and that's not of God. It's very simple, okay? You are not suited for it. You're just not suited for it. And even you try and you try and you try and you know it's not working. You very simply tell you it's not from God. The funny thing is this, eh? ladies and gentlemen, the funny thing is this. Many times when God calls you to do something, the first thing that comes to your mind is doubt. The first thing that comes to your mind, you say, the first thing that comes to your mind says, it is beyond me. I cannot do it. And therefore, God will never 
leave you empty. God will not leave you alone on your own. If God give you a dream, if God give you a dream, a vision, a word, He will also give you confirmation. Everybody says confirmation. How does God give you confirmation? Number one, He gives you from the Word of God, the Bible. Give you from the Word of God. Number two, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You see, the Holy Spirit cannot, I say again, uh, the Holy Spirit cannot confirm something outside from the Word of God. Do you understand? Even Jesus himself has to use the Word of God. Remember when Jesus was tempted? Remember when Jesus was tempted uh, in Matthew? You read what happened in Matthew and Luke. You read that the devil came to tempt him. What did Jesus do? Jesus is the Son of God, correct? He can tell the devil, get lost. He no, no, he used the Word of God. When, did, when was Jesus tempted? When did Jesus get tempted? He got he started his temptation when? The temptation started after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came down on him. Who drove him to the wilderness? Was it the devil? Read your Bible? No. The Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. And during the 40 days of temptation. During the 40 days of testing, even Jesus himself used the Word of God. Can you imagine that the Son of God subject himself to the very Word that God himself gave? If Jesus needs to do that, how much more for our life? I look into this room tonight and we are going to go for our break soon. I look into this room tonight and I'll tell you this. Every one of you, every one of you, God has already spoken to you before. A dream, a vision. And it's not about ministry. It's about yourself. It's about your family first. What was Abraham asking? Abraham was asking for a child. What was God promising? God was promising a nation. What was God giving? What was God saying that through the nation, through Abraham, through the nation, through Abraham, God's going to bless the people of the world? Was Abraham looking to be a, blessed to be a blessing? No. My friend, each and every one of you, each and every one of you, God has given you a dream, a vision, a word so that you are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? Amen? You don't have, and it's it got nothing to do with whether you got a lot of money or not. How does the third confirmation, what is the third confirmation? What is the third confirmation? Situations. Situations or quote unquote coincidences. You meet somebody that you have not seen for a long time and you started talking and you, you've been asking yourself, is this of God? Is this not of God? And then you're, just, you're talking and then somebody comes to you, hey, you know you should be doing this. And you're wondering, we know each other for so many years, he never talked about this. Why suddenly he's, you know, nobody ever come up to me, uh, Nobody ever come up to me and says, Hey, Paul Lowe, you should start singing. No, nobody. Well, everybody, many people come up to me, you better don't sing. Uh, they want confirmation. So what is the first seeing the unseen? The first seeing the unseen tonight is about what has God spoken to you about? 
What has God spoken to you through your years? Some of you have been Christians for many years. Some of you are serving for many years. And yet through your years of serving, years of ministry, years of uh, being involved in this and that, there is this question in your mind, God, what is it that you're asking me to do? And the, the truth of the matter is, you know, you know, but you don't believe. Why? Because you're looking at your current situation. You are not looking at what God has spoken to you. Imagine you are Abraham and you bring your family out. You, your wife, you have servants, you have slaves. You bring your family to a foreign land. And then God says, I'm giving you this land. And I'm giving you the land of this nation, the Gergesites, the Parasites, the whatever side, the inside, the mosquito, you know. God, God, God give you all this land and you're looking at their, their towns, you're looking at their, their fortresses, you're thinking, how? How is it possible? If you look on the outside, it will look impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? 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 God has already spoken in your life. And whenever you doubt what God has spoken in your life, do you know what we do? Do you know what happens when we don't go along God's plan? Do you know what we do? We start filling our life with our own plan. Because we say, it's not working. It is not working. Can you go to the verse? Uh, I think it's right at the end. I'm, I'm skipping the verse. Then we go for, go for a break. It's in Jeremiah chapter 1. Can you go to Jeremiah chapter 1? There's uh, the verse that I gave you guys. Uh, do you have it? Very good. Thank you so much. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm going to read this and we go for a break, okay? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 to 12 says this. The word of the Lord came to me and said, What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. Next verse. And the Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see my word is fulfilled. In another translation, I am watching to perform my words. Other translations, I am watching to perform my work. So what words did God give you? What vision, what dream for your life? We don't talk about other things first. For your own personal life. For your own personal ministry. For your own personal family. What has God spoken? How do we know it? Confirmation. Number one, God will give you the skills to do it. Number two, you have the Word of God. Number three, you have the Holy Spirit to confirm it from the Word. And number four, it's very simple. The coincidences, the situation will tell you you are on the right path. And it's not based on your feelings. It doesn't matter how you feel. I'm quite sure Abraham... You know, when God called him at 75, he walks out, come to the land. Then he said, I will make you a father of many nations. He come out, 75, 76, 77, 78, 70. Do you think Abraham maybe are thinking, I should go back to my own country? Ten years has passed. No son, no daughter. What land is this? I look at all the fortresses, all this nation. Who am I to attack them? Who am I to conquer them? But it's not you who bring it to pass. God says to Jeremiah, you have seen correct. So what are you seeing? Are you seeing the natural or are you seeing the unseen of what God has given you? 
Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus and see God bringing what He spoke to you. Let Him bring to pass. Amen? Amen? Time now on is 8.26. Let's have a 15 minutes break and be back by 8.45. So you got 17 minutes break. Okay? Thank you. Let's go.
both way. Uh, if you know there's some, the, the difference between yourself, things of your own, and things of God is mostly is when God tells you to do something, you doubt. It's strange. Mostly when God tells you to do something, we doubt. But mostly when we think of something we want to do, we think it's God and we go ahead without doubting. If we can just invert the other way around, it will be so much better and easier for our life. How many of you understand what I'm trying to say? How many of you that God told you something and you said, and then, and then you know, you, you try to get away and no, 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 not me, no. And it takes sometimes months. Some of you take years, right? And some of you, when after you actually start doing what God tells you, you, you sort of slap yourself and say, if I only know, I start early year. And the, the, the other opposite is that when you, you want to do something and everyone tells you, no, 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 it's not of God, it's not of God. No, this is of God, this is of God. You are the only one Believing it, no. Nobody else believe it. Sometimes God sent people around us to tell us. When I, when I want to go into the ministry, when I finally wanted to go into the ministry, I told some of my very, very close friends and all of them told me, cannot. <laughs> you cannot. Your, your temper, your, your craziness, your abruptness, people will not listen to you. And I said, yeah. And I agree with them. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel like going. But God keep confirming that. My friends, if God has given you something for you to do, do you know something? You know what you need to do? You don't have to fulfill the whole thing. You just need to take the first step. You just need to take the first step. So if God has spoken something to you, take the first step. Abraham took the first step. God says, leave your home, leave your country, go to a land I will show you. Do you know something? That time, no GPS, no Google map. Abraham doesn't know where is he going. He's just walking, walking, walking. And then finally, when he went to Egypt, that was not the land. God never said, I'll give you Egypt. And after he came out from Egypt, uh, remember Lot, the nephew Lot? The most famous name in the Philippines. Do you know that Lot is the most famous name in the Philippines? Lot for sale, Lot for sale. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you don't see Jesus, you don't see John, you don't see uh, Paul, you see Lot. <laughs> you don't see Abraham, you see Lot. Lot for sale. Lot. Everywhere you go, you see Lot for sale. Right? <laughs> Every time I go around the Philippines, I, I, I get crazy ideas. So think about this, that even when uh, Abraham and Lot separated, Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Lot went to, towards Sodom. Abraham stood there. Only when Lot left, did God say that, uh, look north, east, south, west. This is the land I'm giving you. Abraham could see, oh, okay, it's not bad. And as if, so that's a second confirmation. As if that was not enough, when God cut the covenant with Abraham, he gave the dimension. Do you know, do you know how big is actually the land that God promised to Abraham? Do you know? You know Israel? You see the map of Israel? I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Maybe tomorrow night I'll, I'll, I'll bring, bring the... the, the I'll load the, the map up. If you look at the map of Israel, it, it looks like a tauge. It looks like a, 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 a spring. You know? What's tauge in, in? Bean sprout. What is it in Tagalog? Toge. Toge. Oh, tauge is toge in... Okay, so quite, quite similar. Toge. You know, it, it looks like a toge, you know? All right, it's long, longish, right? Do you know that the land 
that God promised to Abraham stretches all the way to Lebanon, part of Syria, part of Jordan, present-day Jordan, and all the way to almost Saudi Arabia. That big. But Israel never, never, ever occupy those land. Never. Not even in the glorious uh, uh, period of King Solomon. The two, the two persons that conquered the most land for the land of East, for, for the nation of Israel, the two persons that conquered the most land, do you know who they are? One is Joshua. You know who's the next one? Solomon. Solomon was. No, not David, Solomon. But yet Solomon in all his wisdom, all his knowledge, never fully established the land space. Why? And this is the... Re- Can you go to Galatians for me, uh, friends up there? Can you put on Galatians? Thank you very much. So in Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 to 18, it's read like this. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. This is everyday life, huh? <laughs> physical life. Just as no one can set aside or add to human covenant that is duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and his seed. Scriptures, scripture does not say and to seeds, meaning many people, but to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later did not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the... When was the covenant cut? When did God cut the covenant? Genesis 15. When God told Abraham to put the animals, that was 430 years before God gave the law to Moses. Now, do you know what's a covenant? Do you know what's a covenant? A covenant is not a contract. eh? A covenant is an agreement that must be enforced by other party as long as one party doesn't die. You you understand? A covenant is an agreement that must be enforced between either party as long as one party is still alive. So let me give you the example. Do you remember... David and Jonathan, David and Jonathan, they had a covenant, right? Jonathan told David, I know that God has anointed you as the next king. So, let's cut a covenant. I will support you. But if anything happens, look after my family. Now, Jonathan and King Saul, his father, died on the same day in the battle. Correct? Jonathan has a son called Mehibosheth. The man, no shave. Boshef. Iboshef. Okay, so that's Mehibosheth is the name. And Mehibosheth was crippled. All right? Mehibosheth was crippled. Uh, when you read Bible uh, in your own dialect and own language, even in Tagalog, you can imagine different, different words, okay? So Mehibosheth was crippled living in a place called Lodiba. And King David, when he was settled in his king, uh, in his palace, he asked, is there anyone in Jonathan's household who is still alive that I can show kindness because of Jonathan? And they said, yes. Uh, Ziba, the servant, said, yes, there is a son of Jonathan called Mehibosheth. So Mehibosheth was brought to King David, and King David says, Mehibosheth, everything that your grandfather owned and your father owned, I give it back to you. Why did David do that? Because David cut a covenant with Jonathan. Jonathan has died. 
David has not. And what did David say? David said to Mary Bosheth, and from today onwards, you eat at my table. He's the grandson of the enemy who wants to kill him. But because of the covenant, David kept and looked after Mehibosheth. Listen carefully. Eh? When King David died, Solomon didn't carry out that covenant. Do you know why? Because the covenant was cut between David and Jonathan. Jonathan died. David was still alive. David kept the covenant. Now, if you understand that, huh? if you understand that, 430 years earlier before the law, God cut a covenant with Abraham. Correct? Is Abraham alive or dead? 430 years later. Already dead, huh? Moses came, you know, all the, all the people. Moses came, Jacob came, uh, the, the 12 tribes came, Moses came, and the law was given. Do you know something? The verse here says this. Uh, what I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside. If you read the original Greek, uh, it gives you this affirmation. Cannot set aside. The law given 430 years later cannot set aside the promise given by God. Why? Abraham is dead. Can God die? Can God die? So as long as God is alive and He's alive for all eternity, that promise is never done away. Do you understand? Do you understand? So whatever promise the Bible says and all the promises of God in Christ, they are yes and they are amen. Alright? So, let me read the, this, this verse again. So remember what I said. Huh? If God has given you a promise, if God has given you a promise, and even though the promise is not only for you, but your family, your child, your sons, your daughters, your, your, your grandchildren, God has given you. Even you die, God, who cannot die, will keep that promise. Do you understand? You understand? So it says, and this is why seeing the unseen. Seeing the unseen. So if you're older, you're in your 70s, you're in your 80s, you're in your 90s, you know, you remember, your, you remember God's promises not only to you, but your, God's promises to your children, your family. God promised, I will look after, do, do what I tell you to do. I will look after you, look after your children, look after your grandchildren. Don't worry. And even though you don't see in the natural that is happening, do you know something? Do you know something? Even when you die, God cannot die. And because God cannot die, He will keep the promise. Amen? Amen? Verse 18. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then no longer depends on the promise. And then it no longer. But God in His grace gave to Abraham through a promise. You know, when God promised you something, a dream, a vision, some of you may be thinking, and I've been really, you know, God, you, you put in my heart years ago to have a really nice house. It's been 10 years. Lord, it's been 20 years. It's been 30 years. You know, and if you start looking, if you start looking on the external factors, what happened? Your feelings come. Learn to guard your mouth. I say this to pastors and this is something that God has been putting in my heart again and again. You and I, we cannot control our feelings. When something happens, we become frightened or we become impulsive or we become angry. We cannot control our feelings, but we can control our words. Years ago, I wish I had learned this myself. I didn't learn this myself. So I utter a lot of words that... Basically, I regret that. There are few things in life, there are few things in life that once you use, cannot, cannot take back. T 
time. Once you use your time, cannot take back. How many of you can buy back time? Can? How many of you said, God, I wasted 10 years, so I'm going to serve, serve, serve you for the next 10 years, then you give me back extra 10 years. Can? Does it work that way? You cannot. You understand? Time once used, cannot. Money used, can earn back. You know, money lost, even investment, or people steal from you, or people cheat you, or you waste money. You can earn it back. Money can be earned back. Time cannot. The second thing, one of the few things that once you use, cannot take back, is words. How many of you have, and I'm quite sure some of you would have this experience. Years ago, you all had a quarrel with somebody, you know, who was close to you. Let's say Aaron and myself, okay? Uh, Aaron and myself are, are good friends. And then one day we had a disagreement and, I, and, I, and, and I, uh, uh, Ariel scolded me. You stupid idiot! He always called me then. No, no, he doesn't, he doesn't. All right? Uh, and, and, and Ariel called me. Like I said, 20 years ago, he called me, you stupid, and I bear this grudge. And later on, even Ariel would say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, all right? And to him, uh, even to him, he feels that, he says sorry, I say okay. He, no, I can still remember the day. How many of you remember such days? Wow. Filipinos, you are fantastic. Nobody got such days. Must be a Singaporean problem. <laughs> How many of you remember such things? Right? You quarrel with somebody, somebody that you are good friends with, and then you can remember those words. Those were the days, my friend. We hope it never happened again. How many of you have said things that you regret? And even though you're sincerely regretting, you cannot take back those words. True? True? And God is like that. Listen, huh? Listen. God is outside time. He's outside time. And God, when He speaks, and when He said something to you, when He promised you, even you are wrong, even when you fail, God doesn't take back His words. I forget to give them this verse, but this verse just came to my mind. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't change His mind. If He promised you something, if He promised you something, He will do it. He will do it. So, can you go to my? Can you go to the tablet? I got two questions here, or two statement, and the two statement is this: What we see on our every day, what we see on our every day, is factual. You go out if it rains, it's a fact, right? It go out in the rain, it's a fact. So things are factual, but what you really are. Is truth. Especially you and I, who are sons of the living God, sons and daughters of God. What God said to you and what God has given to you through the Word of God, that is truth. What you are seeing, what you are feeling is factual, but may not be truth. It can be a lie. Do you understand? Do you understand the difference? So tonight, as we consider these two aspects, tomorrow I'll be talking about seeing the unseen. Tomorrow I'll be talking about seeing the unseen in your work and ministry or church and also in your stewardship finance. I'll put finance right at the back. Okay? So tonight, it's basically about you individually and for your family. Even if you are not married yet, where is Jesse? Ah? Jesse came to me uh, standing there just now. He says, Brother Paul, the pastor, I remember what you said on Sunday. If you have a brother and you get married, you become a brother-in-law. 
If you have a sister and you get married, she becomes a sister-in-law. You have parents, they become father-in-law, mother-in-law. But if you get a wife, she becomes the law. So his law is coming. I want to ask you this question. What truth has God put in your life? What truth has God spoken over you? And I'll tell you this, okay? The, the issue here, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, oh, don't worry, God is going to, in this life, we will have trouble. Some of our friends, some of our family members are sick. You know, they are having health issue. Some of our friends, some of our family members are having financial issue. Some have relationship issue. Some have ministry issue. Some of you are struggling with your own track record, your own past. Some of us got issues in our past that we wish never has happened. My friends, you cannot live yesterday, today. It's over. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. And tomorrow, tomorrow, now it's now, yeah? Tomorrow is not your answer for today. Today is your preparation for tomorrow. If, you, if the things that you're supposed to do today, you don't do. When you wait, you say, ah, never mind, I'll wait until tomorrow. And then you do it tomorrow. What you are doing is pushing the responsibility. And when tomorrow comes, when you wake up, you not only have to do yesterday, prob- settle up yesterday's problem, you still got to settle today's problem. So live today, today, by what God has given you. So tonight, even as we think about such things for your family, I want to focus tonight specifically about you first. Not ministry, not work, not church, not business, not job, not relationship outside your own family. But you individually, what is your relationship with Jesus Christ? What is your personal walk with God like? Guys, can you put uh, Jeremiah again for me, please? Jeremiah. What is it in your own life that you feel that you want to do and change? What is it? What is that area of your life? I want tonight to be something between you and Abba Father. Not about your church. I know it's a leadership thing. But my friends, if we as leaders cannot settle what is within us, how can we help other people? True? True or not? If we are not settled within us about what God has given me, what God has shown me, how can I be a leader to other people? You cannot lead others unless you allow God to lead you first. The Apostle Paul says this, follow me as I follow Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Follow me as I follow Christ. But look, even if you fail in your life previously or you have a track record that doesn't look so good, it's okay. I'm telling you it's okay. Because Why? With God, in Christ, there is no condemnation. The question is, what are you going to do about it tonight? For those of you watching online, and you have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, no matter how much determination you have, no matter how much dream, how much vision you have, you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't, because you're not in Christ, you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior. I want to invite you. I'm going to say a, a, a salvation prayer at the end. And those of you who, because I believe everybody here are believers, uh, 
Those of you who happen to be watching online and you're, you have, haven't given your life to Jesus, you can, you can change today. You can change tonight. We'll say, we, uh, I, will, I will say the salvation prayer and if you're at home watching or wherever, you can follow me and Jesus will come into your life. And when Jesus comes into your life, you not only get Jesus, you're not saved in Christ, but you also get the Holy Spirit living inside you to help you, to strengthen you, to guide you. Amen? So my question for you, this second section, is this. What has God shown you about your family? How do you see your family five years down the road, ten years down the road? Some of you are parents, some of you are parents and grandparents, all right? Some of you are hoping to be parents. It doesn't matter. The question is, right now, what do you see? See the unseen. You know what God told Abraham? I will make you a father of many nations. Did you know that when Abraham, that Abraham was actually still alive, when Isaac married Isaac the son, Abraham was still alive. And think about this. Abraham lived to 175. So he saw a son got married. He almost saw his grandson as well, Jacob and Esau. What dreams do you have for your life? What dreams do you have for your family? I look at my own life and I say to my own children, I say I want their life not to be rich or popular or what, but I want their life to be so in line with the will of God. With the will of God. If God wants them to be missionary, so be it. If God, if God wants them to be an actress, so be it. Doesn't matter. But the important thing is, do we see the unseen? So I'm going to go into my tablet again. But before I go to my tablet, I want to read this uh, few verses to you in Jeremiah. The word of the Lord come to, came to me and says, what do you see, Jeremiah? So my question to you tonight is, what do you see, Ariel? What do you see, Anthony? What do you see, Austin? What do you see, David? What do you see, Billy? What do you see? If you cannot see anything, you have the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit can help you. Then ask the Holy Spirit, Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus to reach out and touch me and say that He loves me. I still can't sing, right? Okay. Right, moving right along. Can't sing means can't sing. Don't try, okay? What did you see, Jeremiah? Uh, sorry, go back, go back. <laughs> Haven't finished reading. Uh, I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. Verse 12. And the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. Before you can see the blessing or the miracle, just now we sang the song huh, about miracles. Before you can see the blessing and the miracles and the goodness and the grace of God, learn to ask God to help you to see correctly. When you see correctly, you know what happened? If you see according to the Word of God, do you know what happened? God is watching to see His Word over you, over your health, over your life, over your parents, over your sons, over your daughters, your grandchildren to come to pass. You may be around, you may not be around, but God will bring it to pass. Let's go to my board, please. Thank you so much. So this is what I want to, to draw. I said earlier that the Word of God is not lineal. It's multidimensional. With you, you have a spirit. 
You have a soul. You have a body. Sitting down there, you are already three-dimensional. But when you are in Christ, you become four-dimensional. Why? Because the Holy Spirit comes in. And when the Holy Spirit comes in because you are born again, the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit, doesn't speak to your soul, doesn't speak to your body. It speaks to your spirit. Your body basically just acts out the blockage, your blockage in your blood vessel, the blockage that caused the stroke, the blockage that caused the heart attack, the blockage that caused... Your, bo- your blockage is actually in the soulish area. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, says no longer be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. No longer be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind. I'd like to ask you, all of you, how many of you would like to see your life transformed? You know what you need to do? Please don't Please don't try to, oh, good, if you put it, let, let's, let's read that. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you would be able to test what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The question, therefore, is that just as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? Uh, leave, leave the verse up there. Yeah? Just as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed three times. What did He pray? Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. Question. How many wheels were there in battle? I asked this question before. Yeah. How many wheels were there in battle? One or two? He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. Yet, not my will, but thy will be done. How many wheels was in battle? Two. Two? No. One. It was Jesus' will. Either he submit his will to the Father's will, or he rebel against the Father, but the Father's will will still be carrying out. You understand? It's never, God, it's never, Jesus, it's never the Father's will that is in question. So tonight, I want to ask you this question. How many of you would like your life to be transformed? Because when your life is transformed, what happens is this. You are the one who tests what God's will is. Not God. God don't need to test His own will. God knows His will will come to pass. But you will test. He says here, then you will be able to test and approve. How many of you want to approve God? But that's what the Bible says. It said, you approve what God's will is. Not God, but what God's, God's will is. And His will is not three. Eh? It's not good. One good will, pleasing will, Perfect will. It's not three, yeah? It's the same will. It is good. Say good. How many of you want God's good will? How many of you want God's pleasing will? And how many of you want God's perfect will? It's just one. And God is asking you, allow 
me to allow you to test that my will for you, it is good, it is pleasing, and it's perfect. Tonight, I want to say this as we close. We're going to pray. God loves you. All of you. It doesn't matter what yesterday, from the day you were born until yesterday, it doesn't matter what it was. It's over. You cannot change it. Good or bad, you can't do anything about it. The question is right now, would you, even as a believer, would you allow God to perform His will? Would you allow God to perform His vision? Would you allow God to perform His dream for you over your life? Would you allow God to watch His words to perform it in your life? And the way to allow it is to say, come Holy Spirit. Come, not just live in me, but lead me. Come Holy Spirit. Not just by reading the word and then speak the word, but lead me to walk by faith, to walk in the unseen realm, to walk where there is authorities, to walk where there is principalities, to walk where there is uh, 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 rulers in the heavenly realm, to walk all above them by seated, by being seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. When we do that, when we do that, we can truly say, just now, uh, the worship team, I do not know who says, uh, I heard this, the battle belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. Do you know why the battle belongs to the Lord? Because it is God who is watching His Word to perform it. Amen? Can I pray for you? Can you all stand up? Can you all close your eyes? Don't look down. Close your eyes. Look up to heaven. Tilt your head upwards as, we, as I'm going to pray. And then see Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father. And open up your hands as if you're receiving God's blessing for you. Not my blessing, but God's blessing. Father God, in Jesus' name, you see every person here, every child of God, of yours right here, right now. And as they close their eyes, and in their mind see you, Jesus, seated at the right hand of the Father, they see themselves. They see themselves. They see themselves in the unseen realm, seeing themselves seated at the right hand of the Father in you, Lord Jesus. And God, Father, Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit, bless your sons and daughters. Bless them, bless their family, bless their brothers and sisters, their siblings, their parents, their children, their grandchildren, every person in their household that they are healthy, that they are blessed, that they are grace, that they are mercied. Because when you give a promise, Father God, because you are eternal, you will watch it to perform it, to come to pass. The Lord bless each and every one of you and your household that each and every day you become more and more conscious of Jesus Christ and His good, pleasing and perfect will will come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. And everybody say, please, please be seated. I'm going to do another prayer. For those of you who have never received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, those of you watching online, and you're asking, Brother Paul, I hear what you say, that God has a good plan for me. That God has a pleasing plan for me. That God has a perfect plan for me. 
Brother Paul, how do I make, how do I access into this wonderful goodness of God? If you have never said this prayer, even those of you here and those of you watching online, I want you to just close your eyes and everybody just close. I would like to invite all of you sitting down here to close your eyes and repeat with me so to encourage the rest. Can we do that? Let's close our eyes and let's invite Jesus into our life. And this is how you do it. Very simple. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today, right now, I invite you into my life to be my Lord, to be my Savior. Father God, thank you for Jesus Christ who died for me and washed me clean and make me a son of God, a daughter of God because of Jesus' perfect work. Now Lord, I receive you into my life as you receive me into you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And if you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, you have become a child of the living God and the Holy Spirit lives in you. And just for, just as it's true for believers who have been believers for a long time and for believers who have just become children of God, the blessing of the God, the blessing of God is also upon you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord's grace be upon you. The Holy Spirit overshadow you and everywhere you go you go in the peace and goodness of God in Jesus name the Lord bless you see you tomorrow thank you for coming were you blessed? Amen so I hope some of you who actually were reminded if you have actually sinned and unseen and have uh, heeded the call of God, maybe it's about time that you actually heed it. No? Don't, don't run away from His calling and finally realize that what is unseen is something doable and achievable according to God. May, I, we, may we see you again tomorrow, same time at 7. God bless everyone. Good evening.